Yeah. All right. Hopefully none. Um, okay. So I'm the I'm the odd man out. Uh, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, so um, you know, bear with me. Um, I've got a presentation, and I I'm just hoping. Can I can I click? Oh, okay. Can you hear me at the back? Now, now you can. All right. Super. Um, so yeah, you you heard some fancy stuff about me. Uh, I am a pretty regular guy. Um, I love my sports. I uh, I love my beer. Um, I have two bosses, one in the company, one at home. Um, I hate I hate window shopping. So you can see the stereotyping I'm already doing. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm a regular guy, and um, I'm going to walk you through a presentation. And you know, sorry, this is sort of my legacy from, from my, my previous jobs. Everything goes on a presentation. Um, you, you are not going to get the solutions in this deck. Okay, so if any of you have come here for, for the silver bullets, uh, I may disappoint you. Uh, what I'm hoping to do is share my story, share some perspectives, hopefully answer you know, sort, of, sort of the questions out here, which is awareness to action, and hopefully uh, do a value exchange. Hopefully I can give you some value through this conversation. All right. Uh, some of the um, uh, insights here are personal. Some of them are uh, data rich or data backed, and I'll tell you which ones are, which ones aren't. Okay. So um, let's let's start. Okay. Do I point this somewhere? I don't think I can control. Are you controlling it? Okay. Do I need to point it here or point it there? All right. So it looks like I have te technical problems already. Can you um, figure it out? Ah, what did you do? <laughs> he doesn't know what he did, too. Um, all right. I think, I think we should just get going. Um, if you can fix, that would be great. All right. So, um, so Shruti and... Um, and uh, Rita called me up and said, hey, you, you want to come and, and talk to an audience? You know, the, the discussion is awareness to action. And I said, yeah, absolutely. It's, it sounds you know, feasible, doable. It's, it's, um, it's, it seems relevant. It seems easy. And then I got this huge paragraph um, after that. And I started reading it. And I saw words for the first time, like, like gender blindness. Um, and um, I said, hey, this is, this, is, this is more hardcore. This is a little bit more serious. So I got to think differently. Now I wish I had my clicker because um, um, so are you, are you going to control it from there then? So can I give you a I'll go like this and you'll change? All right. No, 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 I, I just just practicing. <laughs> just practicing. <laughs> just quickly. Yeah, super. Go back. So this is one page, one oh yeah, backwards and forwards. All right. See, look at this collaboration, teamwork. Um, all right, so this is what happened to me when I saw that um, whole paragraph. I said, holy shit, what, which way do I go? You know, gender blindness, gender awareness. You know, there's going to be this really hard crowd to please. There's going to be, you know, concepts I've, I'm, I'm new to. So I, um, I, I got confused. I was, really, I was really kind of, which way do I go? <laughs> yeah, so my second reaction was, OK, I did a Google search. It's what every intellectual man does or woman does. Um, and I checked out what gender blindness was first. Um, and, and I was just so much literature around it. There was so, I mean, it was beaten to death. And I said, um, guess what? I'm going to um, just be myself, all right? Um, and um, I'm going to walk you through a, a story, a point of view. Some of you may agree, some of you may not. But again, I'm hoping a lot of this sort of resonates. And you know what? If there's feedback from you guys, please give it to me after this session. I'd love to incorporate that. OK. All right. So this is the big question a lot of leaders are trying to answer. Right? It, you know, can, can gender diversity, can it drive better performance? Because then it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer for leaders to bring on board and really espouse diversity. Um, and it becomes, you know, it takes the conversation to a different level. When you, when you say that there is true correlation between gender diversity and, um, and performance. But, um, okay, let's see, high enough? 
Yeah. Yeah. But guess what? There, there are just too many contradictions. I, um, I don't know how many of you have tried to study this. Um, but there are a lot of studies out there. I mean, there's, there's Wharton that's done a study. There's, um, there's McKinsey. There's um, The Atlantic, which is a, um, a really serious magazine. And something you may not be able to see, but it's a Stanford study. Now, um, is this bothering you guys? It's OK? It's, it's for the team at the back. Oh, is it working now? Do I need to do something? Oh, so I pointed somewhere? Wow. I think we'll go back old fashioned again. It doesn't, can, you, can you try it? Maybe I'm doing something really wrong. It's All right. OK, so uh, just it's taken the surprise out. But anyway, what, I, what I've tried to do with the, the, the logos is essentially tell you that there are studies that just refute this claim. They basically say, hey, we, we don't see any evidence that uh, gender diversity kind of uh, drives better performance. You know, that's what Wharton did. They have a, they have a study. You should read it. Uh, there's a McKinsey study which says, you know, absolutely, if you have more women in your board, you're going to perform better. Um, so that's, that's great. Um, then there's the Atlantic. I, I, it's, it's a great magazine. Uh, again, they actually tr uh, they track the financial services market, and they basically say that women uh, fund managers, hedge fund managers, usually outperform the market uh, by three times compared to men. Uh, so they said, hey, clearly great correlation between performance and, uh, and diversity. And then, of course, there's a Stanford um, study which, um, which um, kind of says, hey, again, um, there's too much noise in these in these studies. You know, when there's um... all right, okay. Sorry, this is really taking the drama out. But um, um, no, can you go back? Yeah. All right. So, so, um, so this is this is the challenge. There really isn't any conclusive proof or or study that says yes, diversity drives gender diversity drives performance. And the challenge is there's a lot of noise. When you do these kind of academic research, you, you have too many variables, right? You've got, you've got the economy, uh, you've got the, the industry that you're in, you've got um, other forms of diversity. And so it's very different, difficult to sort of isolate um, gender diversity and say, wow, it's driving, it's driving impact. So then you know, my, my question to myself and to a lot of us is, is that the right question we're, we're asking? Uh, is, is that the right question that, that you know, does gender diversity drive performance, better performance? And so I think, um, I think the easier question, honestly, is, is it just easy to prove that women are smarter than men? Right? And when I say smarter, I don't mean IQ. I mean the ability to work very, very nimbly in this extremely fast-moving world. Right? So smarter is really a, just a bad reflection of being very, very able to, to adapt in this, in this uh, ever-changing world. So I, I said, hey, listen, let's, let's try to answer this question. Um, because it's uh, potentially an easier one to answer. So I did another Google search. Um, and, um, and this is what I, what I my, my, my search term was women, men, EQ, IQ, who is better? Um, and this is what I got. So, so, so 63 results said women were smarter in, of all types in terms of what smarter means. 14 for men, and honestly, 23, I couldn't really understand what, what they were trying to say. So, so, you know, some good sort of empirical evidence that women are smarter, but again, I'm being a slightly facetious here. I mean, the real clear evidence that women are smarter is in the next slide. Right? It's essentially this guy. Uh, yep. Now, he... Yeah, he's from what? <laughs> um, he said this. He said this. Um, he did a rally in 2018 in, in sort of November, I think. Uh, sort of this really. Have you talked to him? No, no, yeah. He's, he's being gentle here. Yeah. He's, he's being, this is his natural pose. Um, and, and uh, you know, if you, uh, if you really want to hear this, there's a video on YouTube. Yeah. I can send you the link after this, but he's actually gone on record and said, women are smarter. So if Trump can see it, come on, guys. <laughs> right? OK, so now, now getting a little serious, um, I have 
I have been, you know, this, this means a lot to me, diversity. You know, I've been, I'm a, I'm a Bengali, so I'm born up and brought up in this sort of household where women are really, really strong. And they challenge you, and they push you, and, and um, they make you feel small. Um, but, um, you know, taking that apart, taking just my family out, I mean, I have met and, and engaged and, and, and worked with a lot of women. And um, I've tried very hard to figure out, hey, how are women doing on various dimensions of leadership or various dimensions or attributes of, of strength, right? Um, I must say that I looked at about 32 women I know. I'm comparing them with their, with their, with their better, better halves or their spouses. Um, and trust me, I, I, I am going to back, back some of this with, with research, but uh, a lot of this is my personal hypothesis. Um, so I looked at 32 women I know and their families, right? Um, and I must tell you that on a lot of attributes that I believe are important in this really, really difficult, difficult world where things are changing, you know, in three months, in six months, um, I honestly, women were on top in at least 80% of the cases. There were some outliers, but um, it, it was just apparent to me. And, and here are some of the, you might find some of these attributes like weird, like oh, why is Ashish bringing this up? But I actually think these are important uh, in the corporate life because they reflect a certain attribute that, that uh, showcases nimbleness. All right. This is like fundamental truth, right? I mean, I don't, I don't think you need, you, need, you need research for this. Um, I, I, you know, my first son was born. I fainted. My wife didn't. Um, and I'm serious. She, she didn't. She was very structured. She was like, um, you know, the baby's come. And I'm like, my tears. And I'm like, I'm, I'm a father. This is like the only father in, in India that's had a child born right now. And my wife goes, you know, Shish, there are at least a thousand other babies being born right at this time. So she was very in control. Um, but, you know, there's a study. There's a study from Yale which says women can put... Um, hands, and it's really well documented, you can put hands in, in, in hot boiling water for 19% uh, more time than a man, right? So don't, don't try it at home. Um, maybe, maybe with your husbands, get him to do it first, um, uh, in case you're really pissed off with him that day. Um, all right, so um, the second one, and again, you know, this, this, is, this, this may seem small, but these are really important. Women are better with money. And, and, and this is a very volatile world, remember. And when, you, when your world is volatile, risks get higher. Um, and Barclays, well, they're, they're a big uh, sort of investment firm uh, in, in London. They um, essentially did a, did a real study of all their uh, high net worth investors. And uh, what they found out was women were usually, usually doing two things better. They were selling poor stocks faster and they were usually b making better returns on, on a three-year basis. Um, and not surprisingly, not surprisingly, uh, one of the main reasons for women doing better was because they discovered this really, really dangerous kind of hormone called testosterone, um, which, as you can imagine, makes men take unnecessary risks. So, um, you know, great with money. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> this one's, again... I don't know if I have to explain this, but um, um, but um, th th there is research. I mean, you, you should try this at home. My my uh, the study says a woman can remember things within two minutes of it being told in a better way than a man can, and within 24 hours they remember much more than what a man does. So a man degrades in his memory, as you can imagine, for all the wrong reasons. Um, but this this is why you know your uh, at least my wife can always tell me what I've worn the last marriage I attended. She, she knows exactly what I've worn, which is just amazing. All right, next one. Um, they're better at finding things. Um, this is a, a great professor. I actually met her. She, she basically says women, and again, I know I'm stereotyping, but I'll come to why I'm saying all of this. Um, women usually find things through landmarks. Men love and I think you've heard this. They love the maps. They love the structure. They love the, you know, the road number and the house number and all that stuff. But um, I know if you're looking for your lost key or uh, you know where you left the dog's leash, you can trust me. The the, the, the woman's going to find it. All right. Uh, I don't think you can see these now, but are they, can you move to the next one? Yeah. Um, then I'll go back. So women are cleaner and more organized than men. Um, 
So this is, so San Diego has done, done a, a large research. They, they went through a thousand companies and they uh, assessed the desks of men employees and women employees. Uh, as you can imagine, women employees' desks were really less cluttered and they had, imagine this, 57% less germs on it, right? So um, again, and I, I don't mean to be uh, facetious, I'm, I'm telling you these are, to be organized and structured and clean is just amazing in, in, this, in this new world. All right, I can keep going on. Um, I mean, I, um, there's another one, if you can go to the next one. I don't know if you're aware of this, but estrogen is, is a far better hormone at fighting bacteria than testosterone is. Came out of McKinley University. Um, if you go to the next one, multitasking. I don't have a source, but I've, I've, I've always wondered, how does my wife uh, cook, change a diaper, and, and talk on the phone at the same time, right? I have never figured it out, and I've, never tr I've tried it, it's never worked. So, you know, multitasking. Any day. Um, they live longer. This is, this is factual. Um, so women, the average uh, life expectancy for a woman is about 72, 71, 72. For men, it's about 67. Um, and women are better car drivers. Um, this is actually true. I, I, are you aware that um, insurance premiums for women is cheaper in the US, right? Because men are just more, more probable to have an accident. Um, they're just not very safe drivers, though they think they are. Um, so again, I can keep going on and on. And, and the reason this may seem a little sort of wacky is because it just shows sort of some of these skills that are needed nowadays, just how to be nimble, how to do things when there are no rules, how to live in a structureless world, you know, how to live in a world where the goalposts are moving. Um, I, I just think that uh, women do a great job. So, um, so you know, Shouldn't teams be clamoring for more men, uh, for more women? Shouldn't um, board members be, you know, saying, shouldn't they be saying, stop hiring men, get more women? Um, because we, you know, clearly evidence shows, and even if you assume that they're equal, right, we all know that um, there's just so much under-representation of, of, of uh, women in the, in the workforce. Um, I think it's anywhere between 20, 20 15 to 20 to 35 percent. I mean, there's a range. And 30, 35% is, is awesome. And then you know, a lot of places are 20% in terms of women in the, in the workforce. So, um, uh, so this is a problem. I mean, that's why we have these events, right? We're having these events because we know there's a bit of a challenge. Um, and, and, I, and of course, you can think of sort of all the reasons why. Because I'm going to try to move into actions. Uh, but um, you know, if you list down the various things, and these are not mutually exclusive. Um, you know, parents, society, family. I was just talking to, um, to Aruna and I was talking to Neha that I just don't think our parents did a great job. You know, I talked to my wife and um, her dad, um, she had a brother. So the brother was put under the usual rigor. Okay, have you gone for your tuitions? Have you, are you going to get into IIT tomorrow? Will you get into uh, Ahmedabad the day, day after? And, and the father was so light on the daughter. Hey, go out, play, do what you want. Because guess what? You're going to get married anyway, right? It was, it was really just regressive thinking. And I've seen this in my family. I've seen this in a lot of families where um, I think we've just done, I think the society conditioning, um, and I think it's changing, but it's just, it's just been poor. And I, and I think that's something, it's a, it's a macro issue. You have to work on it for, for a bit. Um, all of this are kind of interrelated. So risk, risk aversion and um, sort of being scared of failure. Again, I think, um, I don't know how many of you have read uh, Sheryl Sandberg's sort of interviews and books, uh, but um, essentially, you know, the boy could make mistakes, the boy could fall on the ground and, and you know, cut himself, but hey, the girl's got to be perfect. The girl's got to just make sure she gets, you know, the, do the doll dressed up well, she should be, you know, wearing the right lipstick. And, and again, it's, it's kind of societal uh, conditioning, but um, it just doesn't help when you have this kind of conditioning in, in the workplace. Um, how many of you know ab about the Howard Heidi syndrome? Yeah? You guys aware of it? So, um, by the way, am I okay on time? To five more minutes? Okay, okay, fine. So, um, so the, in INSEAD, in INSEAD, which is a, you know, a, good, a good B school, they actually did, they wrote a case study of a very successful entrepreneur, right? The guy's name was Howard. 
and it talked about how he networked beautifully, how he was sharp, and how he, um, you know, kind of did some great deals, and, uh, you know, how he managed some politics, and just amazing, great charisma. And, um, you know, people love the character, Howard. They, they just, you know, the, especially the B-school kids. And what the professor did was they changed um, Howard to Heidi, right? They made it Heidi, and they gave the same case study to a different set of uh, students. And guess what the feedback was? Oh, my gosh, pushy. Um, you know, just, just maybe greedy, this person. Um, aggressive. And, and I guess where I'm coming from is if women feel by being more assertive in the workplace, they will get those kind of labels, it pushes them away from trying to participate um, on the same footings as, as a man does. Because, you know, men do, they, they're more, they try to be more visible, they, they try to make sure they're in the right circles. Um, a woman feels, my God, if I do that, will I be seen as the not-so-nice lady? And I think we've got to get rid of this, this um, perception, or this, this um, Heidi, Heidi Howard syndrome. Um, of course, personal circumstances, you know, yes, there, is, uh, there are lifestyle uh, changes, you know, there's, there are kids coming into the, uh, into the picture, there's the husband moving, and this disrupts the ability for, uh, for, for greater uh, gender uh, diversity in, in, in the workplace. And um, the last one is unconscious bias, and I think you've heard a lot about this. Um, I've, I've colored the last four in, in, in um, sort of highlighted in green, because I think those are kind of controllable. The first one is, honestly, it's gonna take some, some evolution, I think a lot of parents now are just realizing how important it is to push the, the girl child to really be ambitious, to be assertive, um, to fail, to learn how to fail. Um, uh, the other four can actually be worked on at, at, the, at the corporate workplace. And I'll, sh I'll share some examples. But I do want to quickly tell you about unconscious bias, because I thought I was totally, totally consciously unbiased. Um, I thought I was the man, you know, the re renaissance person. So this is what happened. Um, this is something I personally went with two days ago. Um, so we have this really difficult employee, just really difficult, you know, just uh, something wrong with the guy. He is uh, destructive, he's, he's d disrespectful, very good performer, right? So he can, you know, clients love him, really love him, but he is, he is just one sort of wild piece. And uh, the, the person's manager was just having a very difficult time um, engaging with this and, and dealing with this, uh, with this employee. Um, and uh, so I looked at my direct reports. I have, I have eight of them, four are women, four are men. And I said, um, okay, we've got a difficult employee. I've got to get one of the leaders to, to, um, to manage this employee because he is good. The clients, clients uh, uh, really like him, and maybe we can change him. Maybe we can work on him. And so I, I looked at the four guys, my four guy leaders, and I said, you know, Lakshmana, maybe Lakshmana can do it. Govin, maybe Govin can do it. Um, I don't know whether, you know, Prabhu has time. And my head of HR, Seema, looks at me and she goes, dude, there are four women who are uh, also your directs. Why can't they manage this person? And I'm like, you know what? I went into this whole protect my sister. You know, don't let uh, the evil guys bounce on the lady. Um, you know, let's protect, you know, it's the, the Uber driver evil person, you know, and, and that mentality came out, it was so unconscious, uh, because I didn't want the woman, one of my women, uh, women uh, leaders to have a painful experience uh, with this guy. So I don't know if it made sense to you, but I, I immediately saw that I, I took away an opportunity for one of my women leaders to show true leadership. Right? It was really, it was a bad bias, and you know what, I, I learned from it. All right, so quickly. Enough gyan, uh, some action. Um, um, there is, um, so how do you, how do you uh, deal with this? What are things you can do? And, and none of this, again, like I said, is a silver bullet. You can go to the next slide. Um, it's not easy. So um, I don't know, Neha, I don't know if you've been to our office, but uh, you've got to make it front, left, right, and center, right? Uh, we have uh, sort of four ambitions uh, at Epsilon uh, in India. Uh, one of them is 50-50. We got to get to 50-50, uh, and I'll tell you a little bit of where we are and you know uh, where we, how we're trying to get there. So it's got to be part every day. You've got to talk about this. You know, in in your interviews, when you talk to uh, uh, people, when you talk to the junior associate who's joined from college, talk about 50-50, right? So that's kind of one. Um, next one. 
you've got to involve more men. You know, the, the challenge is this whole gender diversity thing starts looking like, you know, birds of the same feather flock together. And, and it kind of distances men. I mean, I was, sorry, Aruna, sorry, others. I, I was sitting there. I, I was worried. Thank God there's some men over here. But, um, hey, the women are great here. The women, uh, it's victory. You're all so pretty and you're so beautiful. I'm like, shit, what about me, man? I, I, am I not pretty beautiful? So anyway, what I meant was uh, we, felt we feel excluded sometimes, and we really want to help, right? So we have a program where we have males, senior leaders, um, each mentoring uh, a woman, a middle management woman who we believe can move to the next level, but needs to be coached on, hey, push the boundary. It's okay if you fail. Um, you know, guess what? You're having a tough time. It's okay. I'll be there behind you if you need any help, right? So just asking women to push that extra mile. Uh, so that's, that's important. That's kind of the coaching we give. Um, um, hey, if you, if you um, can't uh, measure it, you can't improve it. So we have, for every business unit leader, we have a gender mix um, 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 sort of KPI, and um, uh, we track it on a monthly basis. Uh, l and intervention, I won't go into this, but unconscious bias training. We're doing a lot of assertiveness training for, for, for women. Uh, and so I think, you know, it's not, again, a silver bullet, but pushing a lot of trainings through. Um, incentives, I mean, nothing but works better than, uh, than money, right? So we have a program where, you know, uh, the moment you refer a woman, uh, we sponsor a, a, a girl child. So we actually have 150 uh, girl children uh, being sponsored. It's 1 to 10th grade. Um, but we are pushing hard for employees to refer, refer women. Um, and, of course, you've got to be very flexible. I mean, gone are the days of 9 to 5. Gone are the days of 1 to 10. It's 8, 24 by 7 because everyone's kind of doing everything. Uh, but you have to be able to work everywhere, in the bus, in the car, at home. There are times you have to switch off. There are times you need your personal space. Your work environment has to support that. Uh, we, we have a, at Epsilon, we have a work from home forever policy. Uh, wherever you want to work from, you can work from there. Because we have, we have, we have saved 10 amazing high-performing women uh, who have had to move to either Bombay or Delhi. Um, and we just got them to work from home. They decided to stay with us, and they've been with us for like two years. And they're working hard. They're probably creating a lot of impact. I mean, they travel once a month uh, to the office. Um, it does get difficult when you know, you're talking about VP and senior VP because you, you've got to be near your team. But at least for middle management, we've found out that we can, for certain roles, we can get them to work from home. And so they can look after their personal life as well as uh, the, the... And you've got to technology enable yourself. I mean, get Skype, get VCs, make sure that uh, all your employees can, can talk to the, uh, each other from a technology perspective. And um, innovative talent sourcing, I, I'm sorry you can't see this, but we've been working with Neha quite a bit. I mean, last year we uh, went to, um, um, is it, um, you know, we created a program. It's, was it? Um, she, so we, we, I get confused. So She Rises was a program we, uh, we worked with Neha on, which is getting women returning. Uh, we took about 10 uh, interns. We hired three of them. Neha goes, I thought she would say, fantastic, Ashish, you're an amazing guy. She goes, you should have taken more people. Um, <laughs> we, we tried hard. There were just so many roles that were very technical in nature. And that it's, it's, we haven't solved it yet. We're trying to figure out how you can get women into technical roles when they haven't been doing anything for the last few months or for the last few years. All right. So I think um, this is uh, Epstein. I'm so sorry. I, I'll just take one more minute. Um, we, we were 28% women in 2016. Uh, we are 34% uh, end of last year. Okay, it's it's okay. It's um, um, we've got to do better than that. We are uh, targeting 40% by 2020, and it's a KPI for all my business unit leaders. Um, are we gender blind? And again, to Aruna's point, we are absolutely not. We are shameless. Uh, we are working hard to get women to um, to really push the boundary. Um, I know that maybe in 10 years we can we can tell people, hey, you be your individual self because. You know, you, you, the marketplace will figure you out. That ain't happening right now. So we've got to, we've got to show what women can do well, uh, things well. And we've got to give them the right, as Aruna said, we've got to give them the equity platform. You can't make it equal right now at this point in time. Um, all right. So next slide. And, uh, you know, I, I, think, I think I'm actually very positive about this. You know, there's some doomsdayers who, who say this is never going to get fixed. Um, I think it's one of those big, hairy monster problems, right? And now my last slide which is, um, there, this is a big problem you're trying to solve. It's like um, living longer, right? 
You know, a couple of years ago in India, the average um, life expectancy was about 60. It's moved to 70. So within 18 years, it's moved pretty well, right? Um, reducing poverty. Um, you know, we had about 250 million people come out of the poverty line. They came above the poverty line over the last, I think, 10 years. Um, so it's about 30% of our po population in India is now below the poverty line. It used to be 50, 55, 60. So we have moved the needle on this. And so I think it's the same thing for um, improving gender diversity. I think uh, I saw some stats. So Grant Thornton has a report called um, uh, Women in Business. Um, it's a great report. They, 2014, the number of women in leadership roles was 14%. Um, the latest number is 20%. I think I heard 18, but they said 20%. Um, if I go with, if I'm a maths guy, so if I do the calculations right, it should get to be up 35%. So 35% of leadership teams have women in it. And hopefully in the next 10, 15 years, uh, we will have about 40, which I think is, is moving the needle. So, um, you know, our daughters are going to have a fabulous time uh, when, it, when it comes uh, to sort of, um, you know, when we start approaching the, the late 2020s. So, there we go. That's my uh, favorite singer, Bob Dylan. And, you know, the, we may be the loser now, but later we will win because there's so much change going on, and I think you're all part of it. So, uh, thank you very much. We've got a long way to go, but uh, men are there to support you. All right?